Hi, I'm Heather Howell. I'm the care minister here at Lynn Haven United Methodist Church. And today's scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 13, verses 21 through 32. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which one of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. What you are about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of God, Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, so I, I really want to walk through the scripture with you. The first thing that we can look at is Judas. You know, Judas is the bad boy of the Bible. He is most arguably the most hated character in the Bible. But I think there's some important things we need to notice about Judas here. You know, Judas was a follower of Jesus up until this point. He was a disciple. He had seen all the miracles, and he had seen you know, the healings and, and everything. And so I wonder... What makes a person who is that close to Jesus decide to betray him? I mean, what is going on in Jesus in Judas's mind? And was he really a believer? That's my first question. Was he really a believer or was he just a follower of Jesus? Did he have questions about Jesus before this moment? Did he actually believe Jesus was the son of God? Or was he just along for the ride? I, I mean, I don't know. Did something happen to Judas that made him feel like he needed to betray Jesus? We'll never know. Uh, but we need to ask ourselves, what would make a follower of Jesus suddenly betray Jesus in such a dramatic manner? Then there's Peter. Peter's my favorite character of the Bible. So I, I love, I don't love, I shouldn't say I love, but I can identify with Peter because Peter's like, who is it? Tell me who it is. I wonder... Was Peter nervous that he was going to give, give, give that Jesus was going to give him the bread? I mean, was there something in Peter that made him question would would he betray him? There's something going on there with Peter, and so I I can identify with that. Was he relieved when Jesus didn't give him the bread? There's a lot. There's a lot going on there. Do we look for Judas's in our own lives? Because that's what Peter is really doing here. He wants someone else to take responsibility for something that we deep down struggle with ourselves, right? After all, Peter's the one who denies Jesus three times a few ch chapters later. So what does this say about human nature? Are we quick to judge others for sins that we harbor in our own hearts? We need to be careful not to be blind to our own temptation. Peter may not have felt at that moment that he could betray Jesus, but it wouldn't be long before he actually did the exact same thing. Finally, there's Jesus. We can learn a lot from what Jesus does and does not do. Jesus does not break into a diatribe or lecture when Jesus, Judas leaves. He doesn't go on and say, okay, now let me tell you what's about to happen, or let me tell you why this was wrong. He actually focuses on glory and what's about to happen. You see, God always sees a bigger picture going on. Jesus knew that Judas would betray him. This was the first domino that fell, actually, the, leading to the series of, of events for Jesus' eventual arrest, crucifixion, and then the resurrection. He understands that Peter's going to deny him and that Peter will eventually become the founder of the church. He sees our bigger picture, too. He understands that Judas had to betray him so that he could be arrested, so that he could then be crucified, buried, and resurrection. He understood that these events would eventually bring good and bring glory to God and himself. He knew that glory was coming. So to summarize, in Judas, we need to see and ask ourselves, are we mere followers of Jesus or are we true believers? 
And Peter, do we, we need to recognize the fine line of temptation we all have for sin and be careful not to be quick and judge others. And in Jesus, we need to understand that there is always a bigger picture going on, one that will always lead back to Jesus and the glory of God the love and the freedom that we have in his death and resurrection. I hope I've encouraged you today. Thank you.